Welcome back, Physics fans. This is question 16 off the Moodle. And this is all the forces are acting at a point here. This is called a concurrent one. And so we have T2 pulling up. We have T1 pulling up at, the, at different angles and a mass of 32 kilograms pulling down. And there's no torque in here. It's all forces acting at this knot. So there's two different ways of doing it. In the previous video, I did it this way which I broke it up into its x and did all the forces in the x and then all the y. And then I relate them to the get together by substitution to get the answer. But this time I'm going to show you how to do it in a 2D triangle. Okay, this one is just a little bit more visual actually on how to do it. So you kind of have to be careful on how you draw your triangle. It has to be kind of accurate so that you feel that it's true, that it works, okay? So, I'm going to choose one of these forces. Which forces? Well, there's a force here, there's a force there, and there's a force there. And they're all acting at that point, so you have to add them all up to make them equal to zero. It's two-dimensional, so all I have to do is draw a two-dimensional triangle with these three lines and make a, a well, make a triangle. So I'm going to show you that T2 can go up, okay, and then do the force of gravity down, and then do T1 up. Okay, you don't have to draw it that way. This is going to be the force of gravity. We could start with the force of gravity, and then draw T2, and then draw T1. Okay, and then I have to extend that up. Either way, you're going to get identical triangles. Okay, the force of gravity is equal to mg, and that is going to be 32 kilograms times 9.8. And that's going to be 313.6 newtons. But the hardest part here is just right there, right here, right? Watch. This angle is 60. Where is that here? Okay, that's right up here. That's 60. So that makes this angle here 30. Now we have one of the angles in the triangle. Makes me happy. Over here, where is that 60? That 60 is right here. And that doesn't really give me any of the areas of the triangle. Yes, it does. It gives me that this angle here is 30. Okay. Next one, I'm going to just switch to red over here. This angle here is 55 degrees in mine. Where is that 55 degrees in this triangle here? That's right here. And that is also right here. Because that's parallel with the gravity, and it'll be alternate interior angles of parallel lines. I have an inversal transversal. Okay, you got it. That's 55 as well. So we have two angles. That makes that 85, that makes this angle here 95. Now we have solved the triangle because if you have all the angles, all two of them, and then the third one because of some of the angles, they have to equal 180, and we have one of the sides, 13.6, we can get the other two sides by sine law. Let's just do the, the geometry over here so we get to practice there. Where's this 55 over here? That's right. It's right there. That's 55. So if that's 30 and that's 55, then this has to be 35. It's 55, 35, right angle, triangle. And or this yellow angle, this yellow triangle, that yellow angle there, sorry, the yellow angle, that's going to be uh, not 105, whoops, 95 degrees. 35 and 60 is 95. 
So now we use sine law. What is sine law? Let's just do, remember sine law, we have a triangle, and we have angle A, and the opposite side of that is small a. And if we have angle capital B, and the small angle, and the side across it is B, we get that sine of A all over A is equal to the sine of B all over B. That's sine law. And we can also do C and C as well. That's how sine law works. So if we have this triangle with the angles labeled out, it becomes very quick. Okay? It's the sine of, well, we have this side and 95. So the sine of 95 all over 313.6 has to equal... That's the sine law. Has to equal, let's try for T1. That has to equal sine of 30 over T1. At that point, I rearrange it and I get T1 is equal to 313.6 times the sine of 30 divided by the sine of 95. Pull up my calculator. And I get, uh, that was 32 times 9.8, which is the 313.6. That's its weight. Times it by the sine of 30. And divided by the sine of 95. And I get 157.4. Okay, that's how to solve for T1, and how to solve for T2 is the next sine law, okay? And see if, if you follow here, if I say this, I can also say A over sine A equals B over sine B. I could flip both sides and it works. That just makes it easier for us to do this. We don't have to then flip it around. We'll just say T2 divided by the sine of 55 is equal to the two givens that we have here. 313.6 all over the sine of 95. T2 and this angle, relating those two and relating these two. And therefore, T2 is going to equal, I'll just plug it into the calculator without showing all my work. Work will be my calculator for you guys. Will be this number 313 up here. Multiply it by the sine of 55 and divide it by the sine of 95. Times the sine of 55 divided by the sine of 95. And that should be 257.87. Woohoo! Okay, so that's the second way of doing it. I showed uh, in the other video to break it into its components. A little bit more mathematical with a lot of algebra. This one is more geometrical. You have to get that end sine law. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much for paying attention. Hope that's okay. Enjoy.